As from the point of view of Anton Zingarevich, I've known the Zingarevich family for many years, and uh, he is, uh, was educated here. There's a natural connection to Reading. Um, he, as the chairman has said, speaks impeccable English. Uh, this was a very good fit. I've seen stories that he was educated at Bearwood College and or Reading University. Are you Bearwood College is where he Bearwood went to, uh, Sixth College here, and he subsequently studied in London uh, Business School. Uh, can I be nosy and ask a little bit about your own background when you, when you lived or your interest in football? I actually live in Switzerland. Um, I have um, always had an interest in sport. Uh, my, uh, my main company uh, does a lot of financial planning work um, and uh, we have worked with what is the garbage family for many years. Sir John, it's fair to say there are, there are good uh, Russian football <coughs> team owners and there are bad. Just ask mm. Dallero at Portsmouth. Mm. What convinces you that you've got a good one? Simply because um, having worked with uh, Christopher and um, I've met Anton Zingarevich and um, you know I think uh, come on he's had a British education God so he's got to be a good chap uh, but I mean I think no I think you get a feel for people and I mean the, um, Anton is very keen on the game football and what I like about this particular fit is the fact that it's not going to be a crude way of throwing money around it's going to be done properly and I think that's the key the fact that everybody's going to stay in their jobs, the manager, they, 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 they revere the manager, they want the manager to carry on doing what he's done. I mean, the manager's pulled so many rabbits out of a hat, as you know, over the past uh, few years, and he's been with the club for 12 years. He knows the club intim intimately. We have a great, very good culture here at Reading Football Club, and I think that has been recognised by the Zing uh, Anton Zingarevich, and I think that's why... They want to keep the status quo. And I think the, the good news is, of course, is the fact that uh, instead of looking over our shoulders every five minutes what's going to happen next, we know it gives Reading Football Club security going forward. And as I said before, I'm absolutely delighted with this fit because I think it's, it's, good, for, it's good for Reading Football Club, it's good for the fans, and it's good for the town of Reading. It's, it's just a win-win situation all the all the way around. I just hope it comes to fruition at the end of March because that's the dream ticket and I think it's great for everybody. So I have no misgivings about their credentials, I have no misgivings about their integrity uh, and I'm, I'm just absolutely delighted. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that uh, we've been able to attract these people that understand the Reading way, if you will, and are pleased to sort of nurture it and take it forward, take it into the promised land, which is what everybody wants. I love it. Well-known football chairman six years ago was hoping that Mr. Samuelson would come to fruition. He never did. What's the difference this time? Well, it's completely different. There was a very good reason why uh, Boris Sinkarevich, Anton's father, withdrew from the transaction you're alluding to of Everton, which was a minority state to help the club survive at the time. Um, and uh, because of that, we withdrew. And. Uh, uh, you know, waited uh, a number of years, as you can see. And this is Anton Zingarevich. This is not his father. I would like to emphasize that. Anton is 29 years old, intelligent, well-educated young man. Um, and you know, this was his uh, dream, if you like, was to come in, find a football club that he could back and he could help grow. He's extremely knowledgeable on the subject. Um, he's not going to try and second guess the, the manager or the sporting director, Nick Hammond, at all. Um, in fact, he's just going to help them. And they can have intelligent conversations. As a matter of interest, some of you may be aware that we held a meeting in Milan last Tuesday. The only reason this meeting took place in Milan is because uh, Anton didn't have a UK visa to come here. Otherwise, he'd have been here long since. And, um, so, and when we left on after the chairman had met Anton for several hours, uh, we left Milan that evening. We left behind um, Brown uh, McDermott um, at five o'clock in the evening, and he talked football with uh, Anton Zingarevich until one o'clock in the morning, and continued the next morning until they had to go to the airport to fly in their respective directions. Something I've never done, by the way. <laughs> you, you seem like a reasonable man, and as you know, history is history. And, uh, but I'll ask you another question on that, if I may. If in this day of chat rooms and Twitter, if any <coughs> fans are getting in touch with Reading fans and saying, you know, 
watch out. This, this, this man's got a track record. What, what would you say? I would say there's absolutely no re reason to watch out. There was a very good reason why we had to withdraw from that, something I'm not willing to go into here, because it's confidential between um, the, me, the Zingaroviches, and Bill Kenwright. Um, but I can tell you, I saw Bill Kenwright last week, and uh, who I, who's, I know well, and he was fine with it. He knows exactly why it happened, and uh, there were sound reasons for that happening mm -hmm. at the time. We wish Everton ever, every success. Yeah. So I, I just, says, can I just say that... Yeah, but just, say I, 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 another man who's promised something and hasn't come up with a promise. So it wasn't that we didn't have... No, it wasn't, that wasn't the case, but what I want to say to you is this, that I was invited, I know Bill Kenwright very well indeed, and I was invited to talk to him. I didn't talk to him because I never... I, I didn't feel I wanted to because I like to keep these things quiet until we're ready to announce them to the world and his wife. But I didn't talk to Bill Kenwright, but I had every opportunity to speak to him. And if Ken knew about the deal anyway, then he would have rung me up and said whatever he wanted to say, but he didn't. Because um, he wouldn't, because I'm sure it's fine. Now, the other thing you must consider, and that is this, which is why I, I, I feel this is so good. Most foreign buyers come along and they pick off one of our elite premiership clubs as you well know they haven't done that they've come to a championship club they have the onerous task of getting a championship club into the premiership that speaks volumes as far as i'm concerned it speaks ambition and it speaks of a a body of people that want football for football's sake and they're not just here for the glory times they are here to be down in the trenches with the rest of us seeking the promised land and to me that is that is the key thing and I'll tell you what I am so delighted this has happened because this is the dream ticket that I've been looking for for the past 21 years so I'm absolutely over the moon and I really condemn this this to you all because I think it's just so fantastic for Reading Football Club the Thames Valley and for football in general because we've got, we, we've got a, a gentleman here that's coming in that's not going to uh, mess it all up by, by being too lavish, but he's going to give consideration to opportunities that may exist. And we're talking about investing in the, in the academy, which is brilliant, so all those young Johnny Kickables around the Thames Valley and elsewhere will know that when they come to Reading they get the very best facilities and so on. And we have a very well-run well football club. Uh, you know, we've got the chief executive here this afternoon, and um, you know, all my press people, and you know, we, we do it properly at Reading, I think you'll agree, and uh, we're very proud of that record. And all we're getting now is, is a, a great deal of help taking Reading Football Club forward, and I, I think it's absolutely fantastic, I really do. And even better for me is I, I'm allowed to stay on for at least two years as chairman, so what could be better? I would like to add we, that Anton insisted that he stayed, okay? So he couldn't escape us. So he's here for at least 2014, then it's up to the chairman if he wants to stay on longer, and then we've told him as well, after that he becomes life president. So um, for the, you know, we're going to see him for a long time yet. You care a lot about naming rights, but the stadium stayed in the case of the stadium? For the time being, yes. Who knows in the future? It's a commercial decision. But uh, the chairman has mentioned, of course, we're going to invest in the, in the academy and in the scouting system for the club. This is investing in the grassroots. This is where you create the values in football. So we've got to get it up to category one. And we're waiting for the new rules and regulations. When they come, that's, what, that's the objective. Is, is the figure of a 51% sort of... You know, take over. Is that correct? Can you say if that, that's, that's a figure that's been banded about in the press? But As you come from the press, you will know what you should believe and shouldn't believe. <laughs> um, okay. The answer is in stage one, it's 51%. Okay. And, and, yeah, and the amount, by the way, is not 40 million, it's 25 million. Right, okay. Okay. I would assume you, you, you don't want to be hanging around in terms of uh, promotion to the Premier League, I would have thought, and, uh, in terms of new owners. I mean, all, 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 the, all the stakeholders in this club, that means the players, the fans, the directors, everybody, the management team, would love to be in the Premier League. We all know how difficult that is, and if you look at the championship this season, it's a real wide open race. 
So a little bit of strengthening of the club at this time. I mean, the move to, to get Jimmy uh, Kebby to sign a new contract was very important. The manager had rated that very highly, and that has been done. And I would like to emphasize that that was done on the terms which had been offered to him before. There was no increase in the amount which had been put on the table. What Jimmy wanted to hear was the club had its ambition and was going to deliver on that, and that's what's happening. Okay. So, um I know the manager's already hinted there could be a few, few more uh, announcements before the end of the transfer window. Is that? I am that going. I am going to tell you to watch this space. <laughs> That's his. Uh, his. The, those are his announcements, yeah, yeah. and they will be coming. Um, but you know, it's it's going to be done in a very um, a, a way that is uh, that is viable financially. We're not going to break the wage structure of this club. That's very important. Not like you know, Leicester has, is spending big money on player wages and so on. That's not the way to go forward. You've got to keep and manage your budgets. That that that, that hasn't put you off some of the fingers. Uh, 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 some of the fingers being bandied around in terms of like Leicester and wages being paid at these clubs in West Ham. That doesn't put you off or anything like that. Doesn't it? Uh, uh, unless you unless you're financially wise, mm. you will simply bankrupt the club. Mm. That's not wise at all. So you have to do it in a prudent manner, and that's exactly what we're, will be done at Reading, which is what the policy has been in the past. The only difference now is the liquidity is there to do what the club would like to do. Don't have to sell the best players anymore in order to, to make the books balance at the end of the season, and can bring in a few additions um, of you know, quality um, to help get the club up to the Premier League. Mm. I think on the strength of today's announcement and meeting Chris, I think I'd like to believe that um, we get um, an absolutely full crowd on this Saturday when we take on Bristol City because, um, you know, we mean business now and we're going forward. So I think it's a great time for the fans and uh, some of the people that have perhaps in the past um, have um, perhaps thought we haven't had ambition now know that we have got a huge ambition as Chris already says, we're not going to break the bank doing this, but we're going to go forward prudently. And it does give the opportunity to get some fresh blood into the club, to strengthen and go forward. But, you know, very exciting times ahead. And I urge people to get involved now because, um, you know, it's, Reading's going to be quite a, quite a, quite a uh, football club to contend with. The money that will be made available, is that in, in the form of a loan or is that in the form of well, when you when you make it, Johnny, why did you ask that question? I mean, you know, the, uh, I don't know. Listen, uh, where, can, can, uh, you can ask all the questions you like. Uh, when you make an investment in the club, if you're a major shareholder of the club, whether you put the money in by the way of equity or loan, is effectively the same thing in a private company. It makes little difference. Um, uh, the chairman has put uh, in the past has mostly lent the money in, um, but uh, we will do it whatever is appropriate. So it has a strong balance sheet. So, John, how, how much of an involvement will you continue to have? How difficult will it be for you to, to, to step aside even just slightly? Well, uh, it, it won't be difficult at all because I've always said in the past that uh, you know I've been doing this job now for 21 years. And that's quite a long time. And um, since 1990, I've been the chairman of Reading Football Club and be very proud to be the, 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 the chairman of Reading Football Club. And we've had good times and bad times. I'm glad to say we've had more good times than bad times. But there comes a time when you have to move on. Uh, and I'm not moving on. I mean, I'm delighted to be able to, to, to be here as chairman of the club and continue to be chairman of the club. Um, and I think it's, it's nice that I'm around and that we can carry on with the same um, ethics that we always have had here and in a prudent way move forward. As I say the big difference is that we're now going to get the backing for it and the opportunity to strengthen the club as and when we can without having to sell some of our crown jewels. So it's, it's great all round so I have no misgivings about that at all and um, I'm very happy to work with Anton and with Chris. Chris will be on the board very soon and that, that's fantastic and we all get on well and they understand the ethos of Reading, they understand how we work here and they're 
they, they, they embrace it and so you know it's a it's a win-win situation all the way around so does that answer your question yes, uh, good. well you you will all be able to meet Anton when he can get here he's a very very nice young man softly spoken no flamboyancy to him at all and that's the way he operates very quietly and in a very organized fashion so this is an important occasion for Anton too very important ambition for the Premier League, uh, but there's vast differences in wealth, even in the Premier League amongst that elite club of 20. Is there a club in the Premier League that you would look to model yourself on in the way they have gone about achieving their well, ambitions? I mean, common sense prevails. The first thing is to establish the club so it's mid-table Premier League and then hopefully do very well in the Cups and eventually you might make even a European place like the Fulhams and Stokes have managed. This would be, I mean, we're realistic. Uh, getting the Champions League, well, I'm sorry, that's a different budget. And we know there are big six clubs, or, or five or six anyway, whatever the number you want to take these days. Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously can't match in Manchester City, Manchester United, Arsenal, Spurs. Well, we, we wouldn't want to. We wouldn't want to. It's not, mm. our, no, not the place for Reading. Mm -hmm. I suppose Reading fans have uh, they've had it quite good in a way for 20 years. You know, the same sort of chairman and, and Obviously, they've got a lot of trust in you, I think, uh, Sir John, and I you know, appreciate what you've done there. Do you, do you understand there may be a little bit of trepidation or a little bit of unease amongst some Reading fans now that, you know, I suppose when someone's been in place for that long and, and, it, and it changes, that they're a little bit... But he's staying. True, true. And he's true. staying as a significant shareholder yeah. for the next uh, two and a half, three years. So th this is a... Well, it means the status quo has changed, isn't it? It's not, it's not, you know, it's a different... Set yes, but it's people of the same values, mm. and that's very important here. The same ethos, the same business plan, just that the liquidity is back in. You know, it's very when you have a championship side. You know, it's very hard to make money with them in the championship, as we all know. So you've got to manage your budgets. Most of them have to survive by selling players, as Reading was doing, without having to put uh, put more and more money into the club. Now we have the luxury of not having to sell. But having to, but hopefully building uh, carefully. We have every confidence in Brown McDermott and uh, and, and Nick Hammond um, and the whole coaching staff, and we believe that they can do it. We're given the right tools for the job. What kind of an engagement do you, will you be looking to have with the, the supporters and the fan base of the club? What do you mean precisely by that question? Well, I mean the club's a very open club. And there's lots it, of it will continue the same way. Uh, no change. Supporters forums, etc. Of course, welcome. Yes. Yeah. The, you know, when you have a club like this, it's a family concern. This is going to continue as a family concern. Everybody's part. The stakeholders are all together in this, and the fans are immensely important, uh, and to keep them happy um, as well. Well, they want to see their club winning. They want to see the club back in the Premier League. But there are no guarantees in football, you all know that, and we all know that too. You can do your best and that's the best you can do. You need some luck in football too. No, the same, the same spirit will carry on through and um, obviously, hopefully, when the fans get used to the idea, they'll start relaxing and embrace the new idea. I'm sure they're going to be delighted. It reminds me slightly of when we moved from Elm Park to the Modeski Stadium. There was a great sort of fewer about, oh, you know, we can't leave Elm Park, blah, blah, blah. But it settled down very quickly once it happened. I think this is going to be exactly the same because this is what people want. This is what people cry out for is ambition for a football club. And this is exactly what we've got now. So it's a win-win situation all round. And um, the, the Thames Valley sport investment understand that uh, you know if it ain't broke why fix it and it's not broke and it's but they're going to just help it a bit more which is which is quite frankly the dream ticket it really is Chris, um, sorry uh, what, what sort of transfer kit are you going to manage expect for the rest of the, the window and even in the summer um, I wouldn't like to reveal one's hand. Uh, it, it's the, 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 we were given a budget originally uh, by the management team here, what they wanted to spend in the window, and that's the budget they have. Um, they don't want to reveal how much that is, uh, because we don't want to tell the other clubs what we're going to do. Yeah. You'll understand that. I, I think I'd add this as well. We want to put everybody on notice. This isn't sort of open season at Reading Football Club. We will still carry on in the same prudent way that we always have done. There won't be any uh, you know, great deals to be had or anything like that. 
we shall do the, we shall work in the prudent way that we've always worked in. The only difference being is there will be an opportunity to to find further funds when we need it, but it doesn't mean to say we're going to to change anything, and it doesn't mean to say that people can think that they can come to Reading and you know we can pay anything for anything because we're not. We're just going to work in the same prudent way that we always have done. Chris, can I just ask: Were you actively looking to invest in a football club, or uh, and have you, did did you approach other clubs, or was it Anton's link with the tennis club that brought you here to Reading, and was Reading really the sole focus of, of your? For Anton was considering investing in a club in Europe and his preference was the England um, and he had you know he had a number of clubs under consideration in England when it became known that Reading was available that became the whole focus because it made the most sense so there's some disappointed former we never, we never, we never, we never spoke to the other clubs directly. Right. We had that we knew that we know the clubs which were available, um, but this was the perfect fit for him. You know, many reasons: the connection from his education, the fact that you know, if you had to say where has Anton connected most in this country, Reading, and you know, Reading is. Uh, a short distance from London as we know you're almost it's easier actually to get from West London to Reading than it is to get from West London to White Hart Lane or the Emirates Stadium or one of the other clubs on the eastern part of London so it's it's you know, it, it was a very natural thing now this is also a very important catchment area you've got a lot of substantial companies based in Reading and we all know that uh, British Rail or whoever is behind it is Reading investing a lot of money in Reading Railway Station They're looking at what 900 million they're spending it's going to become a very significant hub. Reading is a growing town, a growing locality, and the important is the capital of Thames Valley, if you will. I'm sure there'll be some other towns who don't like me saying that, but I'm going to say it. And you know, and the football club is part of the community, and this club uh, has places places to go. And you know, when when the club has got established in the Premiership, but not until then, then of course we'll look at expanding the stadium. The stadium was a, was designed. So it could go up to 38,000 in stages from the current 25,000. You don't do that until it's financially the moment to do it. So you know, we, we can see that as another big plus. Would, would, would um, anything change with um, London Irish playing? There's no, there's no, no. That's all part of it. Yeah, and I mean, it, you know, we try and sweat the acid. There's no change, as I say. I mean. Um, Thames Valley, uh, Thames Sport Investment are just as keen to find other opportunities and they will be looking to sell more season tickets, they'll be looking to put more seats in here. But, you know, they want to, it's, it's a business transaction, it's not just a, uh, you know, it's not just a head, hedonistic sort of idea of theirs to just come and throw money, they want to make it work. Anton wants to make it a viable football club, as all football clubs should be viable. And I think we've got every uh, chance of making Reading Football Club a very successful club in the in the fullness of time. As, as well as yourself and, and Anton, is there other people involved in the TSI and in the investment group? Well, we have obviously other people working with the company, yes, um, but they're not in the public eye. Uh, so you're primarily you're going to see Anton and me. Given um, Anton's interest in football and the fact that he was at the Edward College for two years, you may not know the answer. Has he ever paid cash to go through the turnstiles here at the day and watch Reading play? I don't know the answer to that uh, question. Uh, no, he has. He has. He, he has, has. yes, yes. So yes. he's... I was going to say stood on the terraces, but that's in the fashion, isn't it? Yeah, well, he did, he did actually. I think he's been to Elm Park. He would have been to yeah, Elm Park as well. Yes, in fact, he told me he'd been to Elm Park. Yeah. He's been to many football matches in other parts of the world, too. He was in Milan to see a match between two Milan sides. Um, that's why we chose the location of Milan, because it fitted in with his travel plans. Can we see, um, will we see the day where people walk the streets of Moscow in wedding hats and things like that, do you know what I mean? Is there any sort of uh, well, kind of deal to be done well, out, out that way? You know I mean? Anton's family comes from St. Petersburg rather than oh, okay, Moscow, so but okay. it, although he himself lives in Moscow at the moment. Oh, okay. um, I, I mean, one of the one of the things we have to do in the commercial side of the club is to build the supporter base in other countries, obviously. Mm. So why not in Russia too? Well, no, I think it's basically a great opportunity for you if you're willing to take it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, have I, you I, ever I, been to Moscow? Oh, I've never. No, no, I've never. <laughs> um, well, I'll open your shop for you if you want. It's sure. quite <laughs> quite cold out there. One day, <laughs> one day you can have a, a Vlad stand. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> <That's laughs> <that. laughs> you can have that one. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, what's your, what's your football club? What's your, what's your uh, well, as a, as a kid, uh, when, when I, as a kid, of course, I, I, every kid has a football club, and it was Tottenham Hotspur. But uh, this is some time ago. So, uh, and uh, of course, when I, when we were looking at Everton, I had to watch uh, Spurs come and play at Everton. They actually won, but I was cheering for the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so, if Reading plays Spurs until next. I'll time. be supporting Reading, of course. Sorry about that, Spurs. <laughs> as a Spurs fan as well, um, I mean, they're a club to be f who kind of do things in the right way. In the sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think their owner, isn't it, Joe Brown? He's he's done things the right way. It, Joe Lewis, yes. yeah. Sorry, Joe Lewis. You know, that's that, I suppose they're a club at the moment. You know, they're given the situation they're in now. They, you could do worse to kind of not follow, but you know. Well, Je Spurs have done v uh, very well mm -hmm. uh, in, in their recent years, ever since Harry Redknapp became manager. And, uh, and look at their team, it's an outstanding team. Unlucky to lose against Man City on oh. Sunday. Let's not go there again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Defoe had turned up one tenth of a second oh, okay. earlier, it would have been the other way around. Is, is Anton likely to be able to get to many games, given... Well, he's got other interests to be lives a long way away. Well, he has every intention of coming, of course, and the very convenience of Heathrow Airport, only a short drive away helps a lot. It, it, so he can easily get here. Wherever he will get to away games in remote places is slightly harder for him, perhaps. But no, he will be coming, that is for sure. Where would fans expect him at the, the ground for the first time? Uh, if you ask Her Majesty's Government when they're issuing his visa, we'd be most grateful to tell us. <laughs> I think, um, you know, what I would say is that, uh, as I say, the reason why this deal is taking place is because is the incredibly well-run club that Reading is, and it's a great tribute to all the people connected with Reading Football Club over the years, and I would really want that to be emphasised because there's plenty of clubs to be bought in England, and I think the fact that this one was chosen because of the way it's run and so on is a great credit to all the people at Reading Football Club including the players, the manager, and, and obviously the, the backroom staff that uh, are the unsung heroes of Reading Football Club, as I always say when I get the opportunity. And I, I would like to emphasise there is no change at all in anybody who's at Reading. The only change is there's some money coming in to help support it. <laughs>